In this example problem, I want to walk through a symbolic problem solving situation dealing with an incline, friction, and acceleration. So kind of putting it all together. The question reads, a book of mass M slides up a ramp with significant friction. What is the size of the book's acceleration while decreasing speed? So solve symbolically using only M, theta, mu sub s, mu sub k, and or g. And so we're going to find an, an expression for the size of the acceleration and the expression is only going to involve these symbols or these variables. So if we want to find the acceleration of any objects, we've got to look to Newton's second law. The acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces on that object divided by the mass. And if there's an acceleration in a particular direction, in this case, the x direction, which we're going to define as parallel to the surface, that means we really only need to look at the sum of the forces in that x direction. Because if there's no acceleration in the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. So if we want to know what the forces or components of forces are in our x direction, let's make a force diagram. So remember, when there's something on an incline, we define the parallel direction to the surface as the x direction and the perpendicular direction to the surface as the y direction. So this is going to represent our x or our parallel direction, and this will represent our y direction. There's a force of gravity on the book of mass m, so we've got the force of gravity pointing straight down. There's a normal force from the surface pushing back up perpendicular to the surface in our positive rotated y direction. And it says friction is significant, and so if the book is sliding up the ramp in our negative x direction and decreasing in speed, well, there's friction that's going to be pushing the book backwards in the positive rotated x direction. Now we need to think about any forces or components of a force that are only in the x direction. Looking back at our force diagram, we have the force of friction in the x direction, the positive x direction, and gravity is kind of in the x and y direction, so there's a component of gravity in the x direction. So remember, whenever there's a force not in the x or y direction that's defined, we have to split that force up in, into components. So the actual force of gravity is going to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and the shorter lengths of the other sides of the right triangle will be, in this case, the y and x direction. So this represents the x component of gravity, how much of gravity is pulling in the x direction, and this arrow represents the amount of the gravitational force we're imagining is pulling in our rotated y direction. We call that fgy. So now let's continue our problem. So we're adding together the x component of gravity and the frictional force, those are the two forces that we have to add together in the x direction, friction and the gravitational force in the x direction. And that all has to be divided by mass. Well, remember, the force of gravity in the x direction and the force of friction could be in the positive or negative y direction. So let's decide what the signs are. Fgx, that's pulling in the positive y x direction. And the force of friction, that's also pushing in the positive x direction. When you do symbolic problem solving, you don't leave the vector notation above the symbols. We're going to decide what the signs are for the sizes of the x component of gravity and the frictional force. Since they're both in the positive direction, we can just have positive fgx and positive force of friction. Because we're going to assume in a symbolic solution you're plugging in positive values, so we have to decide what the signs are in our expression. This can't be our final expression because, remember, the problem statement said that we can only use m for mass, theta for the angle, the coefficients of kinetic and static friction, and the Earth's gravitational field strength. So we have to get each of these forces in terms of these symbols or variables. So looking down here, the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the gravitational field strength, m times g. And so the hypotenuse is m times g. And if we want an expression for the force of gravity in the x direction, that's the opposite side of our right triangle, if this is theta. Remember, if theta is the angle of the incline above the horizontal, that's always going to be the same as the angle between the actual force of gravity and the y component. So fgx is opposite that angle. So we'd use the sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. If we solve that for both the x component and the y component, the x component is equal to mg the force of gravity times the sine of the angle, and the y component of gravity is equal to the force of gravity, the hypotenuse, mg, times the cosine of that angle. So we can just plug in mg sine theta for the force of gravity in the x direction. Well, what about the frictional force? 
Our equation to find the size of the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the size of the normal force. So getting an expression for the force of friction, we've got the coefficient of kinetic friction, and the normal force, uh, there's no acceleration in a rotated y direction, so the normal force is the same size as the y component of gravity. So we can replace Fn with Fgy. And we've already put the force of gravity in the y direction in terms of the given variables, m times g times the cosine of theta. So let's put in mg cosine theta for the force of gravity in the y direction. So the force of friction, an expression for the size of the frictional force, only in terms of the given variables, would be the coefficient of the kinetic friction times mg cosine theta. And we can plug this whole expression in for the frictional force. So let's put all of those things together to solve for A, or to find an expression for the size of the acceleration. So that's acceleration is equal to Fgx, which is mg sine theta, plus an expression for the size of the frictional force, which is mu k times mg cosine of theta. And this now is an expression for the size of the acceleration using only the given variables, or only the allowed variables. Well, we can take it one step further because there's a mass in the denominator and there's also an m for mass in each of the terms in the numerator. So if we divide the denominator and the numerator by mass, all those m's cancel out and we get a simplified expression where the acceleration of the block is equal to the gravitational field strength times the sine of theta plus the coefficient of kinetic friction all times g cosine theta.